When the average tourist plans a trip to Germany to see the castles, they might think of all the usual suspects. Heidelberg, Neuschwanstein, Burg Elz. But I've decided to come to a place that I'm pretty sure none of you will have heard of unless you happen to be from the local area. I am on the Freudenburg in the town of Freudenberg. <laughs> But first, let's be clear about exactly which Freudenberg we're talking about, because there are several. If you search the internet, you'll most likely find the famous Freudenberg near Siegen, known for its well-preserved 17th century historic centre. The Freudenberg I'm visiting sometimes calls itself Freudenberg am Main, but Wikipedia calls it Freudenberg Baden, and as far as I can tell, it is officially simply Freudenberg. Things would have been easier if it had stuck with its original name Lüdenzeit, but in the late 12th century the Freudenburg Castle was built and the town renamed itself. The historic centre lies on the river Main, with the hills of the Odenwald rising steeply behind it. The railway was built on the other side of the river and only then did the town get a bridge. It was easily defended but also isolated. Of course, this means that the only place for a road is straight through the historic centre itself. This is probably one reason this place isn't exactly crawling with tourists and it can't be pleasant for the locals either. But as one sign I read points out, this town isn't a theme park, it's a place where people actually live. That in turn does have some unfortunate consequences for visitors as I found out when I made my way up to the castle. There are a few nice touches here and there of course. Well here's the thing I didn't really expect to see, it's a little open air museum uh, and it's free. I mean it's tiny but it's free. But anyone with mobility issues should know that I couldn't find any route from the town to the castle that didn't involve steps. And honestly, even if you did have a magic stair climbing wheelchair, there's no way you're getting it past that. If you can make it all the way to the top, you get to enjoy a small but still impressive castle ruin with some great views of the surrounding countryside. Which was the point, obviously. This kind of castle had a military purpose. There are, of course, advantages in visiting these out-of-the-way unknown places. In this specific case, it's open 24-7. There's no entrance fee. What's particularly important for me, of course, is that there's no restriction on photography or videoing, except the usual restrictions that apply to flying drones. Also, as you've probably noticed, I've got the place almost completely to myself. Construction began in the late 1190s by the Bishop of Würzburg and it was added to and improved over the following centuries. By the year 1507 it had an imposing cannon tower, an outer defensive wall and an unusually massive keep, making the Freudenburg an impregnable fortress for the Count of Wertheim. Impregnable until 1552 when it was damaged in the Second Margrave War. Then the Wertheim dynasty died out, the castle became derelict and only the cannon tower was in use as a prison. That did turn out to be quite handy though, as a few decades later the townsfolk were seized by a particular paranoia that swept the land and something like 150 residents were imprisoned and then executed as witches. That was a huge chunk of the total population at the time. In time, however, the castle became overgrown and forgotten and for centuries languished in a state that in German is known as Sleeping Beauty Sleep. It wasn't until relatively recently that it was rediscovered and restored. Not until 1995 could it be safely opened to the public and work continued for another 20 years after that. So it seems like they do with this place, uh, what well, they often do with ruined castles in these parts, which is to use them in the summer as a venue for open-air plays and concerts. As I later discovered, plays are put on in every odd-numbered year, which explains the lack of actual seats in 2024. But the interesting feature here is the keep. Normally it would be a simple tower, but this one is built in three sections. The first two were completed about the same time, but the third was added about a hundred years later when the construction of a new great hall 
blocked the view from the keep. Now, obviously, there are some common sense rules about visiting a place like this. Obviously, don't leave litter lying around, don't graffiti the place, don't vandalise it, all of that kind of thing. But also, bear in mind that although visitors are welcome to come to places like this and explore whenever they want, it's not necessarily secured very well. And so there are a lot of places where it might be a bit dangerous. There are trip hazards and slip hazards and all kinds of places where you could easily fall off and fall quite a distance as well. So be very careful, especially if you have young children and just don't clamber around anywhere that really you shouldn't be clambering around on. Which isn't to say that this is a death trap, it isn't at all. But just remember that the assumption is that visitors are going to be sensible. That said, once you've sensibly explored the castle ruins and put on your own little play... Bienen oder keine Bienen? Das ist hier die Frage. It's time to go back into town and reward yourself with an ice cream. So another advantage of being out here in the country, this is actually self-service. I had to fetch my own order, but they gave it to me in a glass bowl and they just trust me to bring it back. There's no deposit or anything. Freudenberg can be reached from Aschaffenburg with any RE train bound for Wertheim, Lauda or Kreilsheim. However, at the moment there are some problems with the trains in this area, so you may have to take a replacement bus between Aschaffenburg and Kleinwallstadt.